silent, so he opened not his mouth. The analogy about a sheep's silence during shearing is a known phenomenon in sheep shearing circles. Try to say that fast three times. Sheep may suffer cuts and scratches and, and, and a whole lot more if you have an inexperienced sheep shearer, but you'll never hear any bleeding from their mouths. In the same way, there was never any protest from the holy servant of God, for he was on a mission to atone for the sins of the world. I'd say Isaiah got it absolutely right. His silence in defending himself demonstrated his absolute perfection. His death was all part of the Father's plan, and he was committed to it as his cry in the garden made perfectly clear. For he had spoken, for if he had spoken up, even given one whisper of protest, that would have denied the voluntariness of his offer. So let's make this personal for a moment. We've all been in a position where someone was accusing us of something that we think we've done, that they thought we'd done. What do you do in that situation? When we're accused, we typically defend ourselves. First of all, we defend ourselves when nobody else will. If an enemy claims you cheated and you have a friend nearby to defend you, that's great. But if you have no friend to speak up for you, you defend yourself and say, no, I didn't. So we defend ourselves when nobody else will. We also defend ourselves when proving our innocence will benefit us. If it doesn't really matter, you might not bother to refute someone's claims. But in Jesus' case, it really mattered. His life was on the line. But what should we do, though, when we are guilty? We say, yes, it was me. I did. I was wrong. When we're guilty, we own up to it. We admit our mistake, and then we pay the price. If that means a $200 traffic ticket for a traffic violation, you pay the $200 and you move on. But Jesus didn't have a debt because he wasn't guilty. He was charged with blasphemy, and blasphemy is claiming to be God. The thing is, you can't blaspheme by claiming to be God if you are God. So Jesus wasn't guilty of blasphemy. And the Romans wouldn't execute him for blasphemy, even if he was. So the priests accused him of treason. Yet he wasn't guilty of treason. He didn't threaten Caesar or Rome or try to stir up an insurrection. But guess who did? Barabbas, who they let go, or wanted to be let go. Ultimately did, obviously. Jesus was innocent on all charges. So why didn't Jesus defend himself first? He didn't defend himself because he was innocent. Pilate didn't want to kill him. He knew Jesus was innocent. He recognized it was a religious matter that needed to be handled by the Sanhedrin. But Pilate was in a tough spot. He had infuriated the Jews when he took over power because he started putting up Roman images all over town. And he did it during the night. So in Jerusalem, the people woke up and they're like, oh, wow, his image is everywhere. They were not happy about that. The citizens of Jerusalem wanted nothing to do with it. And Pilate finally yielded to their demands. But he wasn't happy to have lost the fight. Pilate had been sent to that area to keep the peace, and one of the first actions that he did in office almost created a riot. So needless to say, Pilate wasn't wanting to kill Jesus. His wife even said, don't have anything to do with that man. But the crowds were getting more anxious. Tempers were flaring. And in Pilate's mind, if Jesus would just open his mouth, he could be set free. Just open your mouth. But Jesus was silent because he would have been set free. He proved, friends, that he had the wisdom to get himself out of the traps that his accusers were always trying to put him in. We don't have time to go through it today. Uh, think about when he was uh, questioned about paying the taxes. Think about when he was questioned about who was his neighbor. A man as smart and articulate as Jesus could have gotten himself set free from any charges if he had chosen to speak up. And if he'd been set free, friends, we wouldn't have... <laughs> We would be stuck in our sins. He wouldn't have paid the price, leaving us to pay for it ourselves. And the only way you or I could pay for our sin is to experience eternal torment in hell, separated from the goodness of God forever. But like a sheep before his shearers is silent, Jesus was silent because he knew we could not pay for our sin. Why did he do this? Because he loves us. We know this truth from John 3, 16, but there's a greater God-glorifying, God-magnifying reason he remained silent and was willing to die. It was because Jesus loved his Father and surrendered himself completely to him. That was why he did it. 
That brought more glory to God. That willing submission and that love for honoring his dad. Friends, Jesus could silently submit to the Father because he rested in the intimacy of the Father. Jesus knew moving forward with the rescue plan formed before the foundation of the world would usher in greater intimacy with the Father. Believer, you and I must come to a place where we learn to die to ourselves so that we can perfectly identify with Him. Dying to self is what we're learning about in our J-curve study. Dying to self means I put my faith in Christ and live a life where I'm continually owning up. That's repentance and disowning the former way of life. Piper says it this way, Jesus wants disciples who treasure him for who he is, not merely for what he can provide. Friend, the hard struggle you are in right now can open a door to greater intimacy with the Father. Some people keep God at arm's length because they have no idea what he's done for them. Others keep him far off because they don't realize how deeply he feels about them. But today, today, friends, is the day to submit to the Father. Because when you do, you'll hear Him say, I love you. Father, I pray today for all of us who have heard your Spirit speak today. That we might be moved to recognize how deep the Father's love for us how vast beyond all measure. May our response today be, I surrender all. For some, it means surrendering to the Lordship of Christ in their lives. Father, there are some who profess Christ with their mouth. They haven't allowed you to be the Lord of their life. As they've seen Jesus' submission to the Father laid out for us in Isaiah today. May they submit to the Lordship of Christ that's in that same way. Lord, for those of us who are believers, here today. May you show us how we can make known the love of God to our neighbor in unique and extraordinary ways as we lift high the name of Jesus because the cross will always lead us home. We pray this in the name of Christ, our Redeemer. Maybe today you, you want to respond somehow. You, you don't need me to do that. Uh, you can go before the Father right where you are, right in your home, right in your bedroom, right in your car, wherever you're taking this in today. You can go before the Father and say, God, I just surrender my everything uh, to you. So uh, those of you who are here, let's stand and, and just respond by taking in the words, I surrender all.
would surrender all. So those of you who are here with me and those at home, let's read this together as a benediction. Um, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. God bless you, Eastview family. Be sent.